VP race number one for the WSX category. I mean, it's just so much excitement. You look right there, you got Eli Tomac. He's going to be on the inside. Roxon, Savachi, Brayton, his teammate, Freezy. All the riders going out for this tight lap right now, practicing a start. We know how important this start is going to be. So, last chance to look at the track here for the riders, and we're going to go to Kristen. Yeah, guys, earlier in the day, every heat, every piece of race trim data has been incredibly valuable to help these mechanics plan for the reset in between GP races. How riders have been using the clutch, tire, where all data points they were taking into consideration to develop a safe reset strategy. Now, I spoke with quite a few of the mechanics in the paddock, and they were telling me, listen, we're going to keep it simple. We don't want to try anything crazy. Goggles, maybe a splash of water if, you know, the rider needs it, but definitely uh, new gloves. And I was surprised to hear that because I only saw a few riders on the line in the SX2 class take gloves, but all of the mechanics on the starting line nearly are prepared to hand their riders new gloves for each main event. Something about the grip and the wear on the gloves. Just the traction uh, there that you have, I mean, just so many new things here with this format because it it happens you know one two three boom 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 uh just short breaks in between uh so just so much newness here with the fim world supercross championship and the british grand prix i mean the teams and riders they're they're kind of having to figure it out as they go right this kind of one of those uh, the skill to do comes from the doing well right now they're doing it well, this is the one part of what they're doing here that they're most familiar with, and that's racing, right? They know this part, and they know it well. Drop the gate and go after it. Yeah, once the gate drops, you know what you're doing, but it's everything in between. Um, you know, even like what Rick Ware was talking about in that feature where, you know, you're, you're not working out of a, like a race transporter or your race shops. You're basically working out of, uh, you know, cases and uh, containers are bringing the parts, but parts and bikes and all that. And riders are getting getting set. One minute to go. British GP about to get underway. First time in history. World Supercross competition. Having three finals is like three shots at trying to win a race. Well, with three finals, you have to perform in every single race. It's nice that you got you know three finals in case you make a mistake in one and your whole night's not over. You got a chance to rebound. But it also gives three chances to win. More opportunities for us to win, get on the box. So if you're having a good night and you've got really good starts, it can be an amazing time. You have to be 100% ready because it's very physically demanding. It's going to take its toll on the guys. I think round three, people will start to show some wear. It's short, very intense. It's going to make for some good battles. For a fan point of view, it's super exciting seeing three gate drops. The shorter races are more intense. You're going to see tight, intense racing and more jam-packed. More gate drops, which means more action for the fans. The racing's gonna be tight. It's gonna bring a whole different stadium vibe. Couldn't ask for a more exciting show as a fan. And here we go, Jeff. WSX GP race number one. Gated up, ready to go. Ken Roxon, Eli Tomac, Bartabar in the starting gate, ready to go. There's Brayton and the rest of the field all lined up. Take a look at the GoPro track map. One more time here. Short start, you know, if you get the whole shot, you're going to push everybody out right here. We've, we've seen this second turn be really critical. You've got that quad triple into the big triple here. You know, the track it's gonna to start to deteriorate more with these 450s. It's the end of the night. We're gonna notice there's gonna be some ruts coming out of the turns, uh, lots of those little stones. So I look for it to be really slippery. Tracks get a little more hard packed in uh, sections as we go over the finish line jump. Remember what happened in 
the SX2 right here, Oldenburg triples in. This section, which is probably the easiest section of the track, had some of the most consequential uh, uh, moments in that 250SX. But I gotta tell you, consistency is how McElrath won the SX2. And you just gotta think that that's the playbook here going into this. Uh, so if you had to pick a guy WSX. that you know is in the game, who has the best consistency? Is it Roxon? Is it Tomac? Well, I think the Maybe starts are good. I think the starts, <laughs> that they're all so crap. I mean, these are the best riders in the world, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I, there's just so many unknowns. All of this is new. This format is so new. Uh, Roxon so far has been flawless throughout the day. Uh, I mean, I gotta say he's the favorite. Tomac uh, is the AMA champion. He's had basically a perfect season, everything he's done. Call him before the storm right here. Here we go. It was Christmas Eve 2021 when the folks at SX Global were basically awarded the FIM license and since then, Jeff, in less than a year, they have put the World Supercross Championship together. They have brought the best riders in the world from around the globe together to Cardiff, Wales for the first ever running of the British GP. And it is about to become history. Get ready for the gate drop as history is made in Wales. Hole shot's gonna go to Roxon. Sabachi got there first. Tomac wide. inside. Oh, -ho. he's in second. Sabachi's in third on the 17, and here comes the rest of the pack. Well, here they are, the two fastest lap time riders that there have been here today, and once again they are back out front. It's gonna be all-out battle. Roxon out front. Tomac in second. Arguably the two quickest riders in the world, running one and two. GP race number one here in Cardiff. Roxon, Tomac, Savachi, Brayton, Freezy, the top five right now. It's the German rider out in front. Eight laps here for race one. Gonna be so quick. It's a little bit longer than the, than the heat race. And you gotta wonder also, now that we have seen Roxon uncork the, well, let's go back to the start. Savachi probably looks like it's on board with Savachi. He gets in there first, nobody in front of him, but he goes just a little bit wide, and there's Roxon out front. And then Tomac sneaks by also. So, the quad is still in play. That may be what it's gonna take for Roxon to win this main event at the end of that rhythm section. So he just ran the fastest lap so far, Jeff, with a 46.030. Oh, lots. Oh, another rider down. Not sure who that is. And don't forget, Roxon won race number one in the AMA 450 Supercross season opener, the famed Anaheim one this year. He only ran nine races and then stepped away from the series in da after Daytona back in March at Bike Week. That was Jordy Tixie had the French rider that went down with the Oh, there it is. There's the, the quad. quad. And so, it opens up a gap as you hear the crowd come to life here. So he goes from a So he goes to a 45.7. Oh! Oh, oh there's down. Roxon. Unbelievable. He nails the quad and then loses it coming out of a slow corner. Unreal. Just pushing the limits of that genuine Honda. Watch right here. Just loses some traction with that front tire. He's like, oh, no, 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 he got it. Nope, I don't got it. Just sets the fastest single lap that anyone has set all day long. Cloud 18, Luke Cloud is down. We've yep. got the Red Cross flags, yellow flags. He's off the track safely. Now roll. the riders have to roll all the jumps through this section. Then after they get past the Red Cross flags, they can jump again. Meanwhile, Tomac checking out as he had the lead just handed to him by Ken Roxon. Oh, and Sabachi's down right at the finish line jump. Well, and that is a very tricky place because he has to go up and over. He has to go up and over that metal ramp. 
He's going to have to. Oh, he's going to go he's back go around, right around try to find a safe. Here he is, right there. Second rider in the line there. Oh, he catches. Oh, oh. oh just there are a couple little acceleration bumps with it. Oh, how did Brayden get through there? Yeah, I think Brayden had to roll the finish line jump also. Let's go on board. Gets it all wrong, slams down. Meanwhile, Tomac still up front. Seven and a half second lead. Guys, with how hard pack and slick this track has been, riders are having to be patient when they open up the throttle coming out of a transition. Down here where I'm standing in the S turn, you can actually see where there's developing blue group. Riders are trying to time their throttle that way because if they don't, the rear end is kind of slipping out. Well, just, I mean, Tomac has been so good, and it's been Roxon and Savachi that have made the big mistakes. Here's Roxon. He's already caught up to Brayton. Roxon now in fourth. Jeff, how far up can he get? Tomac is trying to check out, but Roxon on Brayton, then Freezy in front of him in second. There's Vince. Well, now here's where the three GP final races, okay? This is where this could come into play and work in Roxon's favor. Roxon looking to get inside on Brayton right here in the bull turn. Got it. Put Roxon in third. Okay. Now he sets sail after Freezy. So up to third, possibly a second, but then you still have two more races to go. This was one main event. Tomac checked out, right? Okay, let's take a look. Oh, Cloud oh. over the bars. Oh, man. He collects. Was that Nicoletti? Uh, no, Nicoletti in the two. Guys. I'm going to have to s take a look and see which one of the club and Mex rider. Is either Clayson or Harlan, one of them. Roxon, no. He's back at it. He's focused. Yeah, he's catching yeah. up to Freezy as well. And, and he that. quads it again. And he's got it dialed, Ralph. He that does. That time was clean. And you he's can got see how much ground he gained on Freezy as well. So Roxon just set the fastest lap by about a second over anyone else. But we've said all night long that Vince Freezy is not easy to pass. He does not give up quickly. He's going to fight for everything here. Yeah, Let's last, see. So last lap, if you're Roxon, Second is as good as the first in this one. It really is. And he's got the speed on Freezy. Let's see if he skims the whoops, goes wide. Maybe he uses the quad again. If he quads, he needs to jump to the inside, which is really risky. Here's Tomac. With a five second lead on Freezy. Checkered flag. And it's going to be. Tomac, Freezy, and Roxon in that order. So Roxon runs out of time, doesn't get a shot at Freezy, and instead of getting that much needed second, he's going to have to settle for third here in GP race number one. Yeah, and Tomac was up to a seven and a half second lead. He obviously backed it down a little bit. It was only four and a half at the end, but I'm really impressed with the rider in third, Ken Roxon. What a way after making that small mistake. He really has, he, like, he's fast down the track. Boy, was he ever. And the wild card rider, Eli Tomac on that star racing Yamaha, ends up taking the win in GP race number.